like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8, a channel devoted to the history of college football. New videos drop twice a week. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. So, uh, last night's game was absolutely crazy. I mean, really, really crazy. One of the greatest baseball games I've ever had the pleasure of watching. Japan's walk-off victory over Mexico in the 2023 World Baseball Classic semifinal had everything that you could want in a baseball game, as it lived up to the hype, and then some. And because of this incredible game, tonight, if you're watching this video on the day of its release, we've got the World Baseball Classic final between Japan and the United States. If Japan wins, they become the first country to ever win three World Baseball Classic titles. If the USA wins, they tie Japan for the most World Baseball Classic titles ever. There is a ton on the line here, and if it's anything like the rest of this tournament has been, it's going to be a classic for the ages. And one thing about the World Baseball Classic that you can't deny is that Japanese people absolutely love baseball, and that's putting it lightly. The World Baseball Classic in Japan is putting up Super Bowl-esque viewership numbers, and it's incredible to watch the stats come in from a viewership standpoint whenever Japan plays. For all five games that Japan played prior to the semifinals against Mexico, since the numbers aren't in yet, over 40% of TVs in the country were tuned into their game. And for their quarterfinal game against Italy, which Japan won 9-3, a whopping 48% of Japanese households tuned into the game. At the game's peak, that number was 54.5%, meaning that roughly 30 million people were tuned into this game. The World Baseball Classic is a big deal, I think that goes without saying, but no country has embraced the tournament and the spirit of the tournament more than Japan has. However, there is a major dilemma in Japan leading up to this game against the United States, and it's about the only thing that can stop this upcoming final from being the most watched baseball game of all time. On one hand, this is one of the biggest games in the history of Japanese baseball. Heck, considering the circumstances, and especially considering the Trout vs. Otani angle, this might be the biggest game in the history of international baseball. On the other hand, this game is not even the slightest bit convenient to Japanese fans when it comes to time zones. Sure, the game is convenient for Americans. The game is taking place at 7 o'clock Eastern, which is when most baseball games start anyways. But in Japan? It's starting at 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning. People have work. People have school. People have things to do. I'm sure a ton of you can relate if you have a Premier League team or you work during the World Cup. But you get the idea. Watching a game in an inconvenient time zone, especially when it involves your team, absolutely stinks. So why do I bring this up? Because Japanese fans know the feeling all too well. Or at the very least, one Japanese fan does. Because during the inaugural installment of the World Baseball Classic in 2006, someone found this lesson out the hard way. Because during the second round of the tournament, the real story wasn't what happened on the field, but rather, what happened halfway around the world when someone tried to watch the game, leading to one of the most bizarre, and quite frankly, dumbest controversies that you're ever going to see in your life when it comes to this tournament. Because this is the story behind the absolutely bizarre controversy at the 2006 World Baseball Classic. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question, we need some context to understand the importance of this game and how the game was going. It's March 15, 2006, and we've got a monumental battle on our hands over at Angel Stadium of Anaheim between Japan and South Korea. This game was big for a variety of reasons, not the least of which was the natural rivalry that always occurs in any sport any time that Japan and South Korea square off against each other. For one, Japan was looking for revenge in a big way. When the two teams met in Pool A, in front of over 40,000 fans of the Tokyo Dome, South Korea won by a final score of 3-2, topping the group as a result in what many consider to be a surprising upset 
especially since Japan won its first two games of the tournament by a mercy rule, and outscored their opponents 32-5 in that stretch. But to be fair, that game against South Korea, from a tournament perspective, didn't matter. Both Japan and South Korea were advancing to the second round, and it made no difference whether they topped the group or not, since both Pool A finalists meet up again in Pool 1 in the second round of the tournament. This one, on the other hand? Yeah, this mattered a ton. South Korea entered this one with a 2-0 record in second round play, having defeated Mexico and the United States, while Japan entered this one at 1-1, following a win against Mexico and a loss at the hands of the United States. Only the top two teams in each group advanced to the championship round. If South Korea won this game, then they would top the group by going undefeated, and would clinch a spot in the semifinals. If Japan won this game, then they would increase their chances tremendously at making the semifinals, as while they wouldn't clinch a spot necessarily, seeing as you could still have a three-way tie with Japan, South Korea, and the USA at 2-1, seeing as Japan had only allowed 5 runs thus far, and the USA had allowed 10, and the tiebreaker used was runs allowed per 9 innings, Japan would set themselves up really nicely to make it to the championship round. However, a loss could be devastating, as if they lost, a USA win the next day against a winless Mexico team, and a Mexico team that got shut out against the USA in the last round, would send the Japanese home empty-handed. The stakes could not be higher. At the very least, they were significantly higher than they were when the teams met at the Tokyo Dome about 10 days before. And unfortunately for Japan, they were unable to get their revenge. As when all was said and done, in front of roughly 40,000 fans at Angel Stadium, South Korea won once again, taking this one by a final score of 2-1, thanks to a two-run double by Jong Bum Lee in the top of the eighth inning to finally put South Korea on the scoreboard. And even though Japan was able to get one run back in the bottom of the ninth on a home run, it was too little, too late, as South Korea topped the group and left Japan's hopes of advancing to the semifinals of the inaugural World Baseball Classic on really thin ice. It left a ton of Japanese baseball fans feeling angry, disappointed, upset, and nervous about what the future in this tournament for them held. And one fan felt the brunt of it more than any other fan. While this game was taking place, a 47-year-old teacher in Osaka had a dilemma on his hands. On one hand, he had a job to do, teach his students, educate them, and carry out the day's lesson plan. On the other hand, he's a baseball fan, like a lot of people in Japan, and he really wants to watch this game. So he had the idea to watch the game on a television in his classroom. Not a bad idea, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of us can relate to having a sporting event on during the school day, and having the opportunity to watch it and take time out of class to do it. Whether it's for March Madness, or the ACC Tournament if you're down in North Carolina, or in my case, in 2009, when I was in seventh grade, and my middle school set up a projection live in the auditorium for anyone who wanted to watch the parade for the New York Yankees after winning the World Series. You might have even seen videos from the 2022 World Cup of students and teachers in England watching the games during the school day. The teacher wants to watch the game, the students want to watch the game. Heck, it felt like the entire country of Japan wanted to watch this game. So setting up the TV and doing that is not a bad idea. Especially since these are 5th graders that we're talking about. In the grand scheme of things, 5th grade means absolutely positively nothing. Even in Japan, from all the resources I found, even though you obviously take tests and whatnot in 5th grade, it's not until 7th grade where your exam grades actually quote-unquote mean something. So what's the problem? Well, the teacher had the genius idea of deciding to do this while administering an exam to his students. Now, there seemed to be an obvious solution here, since it's 5th grade that we're talking about, and that is to administer the exam on a different day, or give the exam before the game or after the game. But nope, this teacher decided to administer the exam while he was watching the game between Japan and South Korea. 
and it would be one thing, I guess, if the teacher could keep quiet and watch the game without saying anything. However, considering the circumstances of the game, in terms of the rivalry against South Korea, and its importance in Japan's fate for the tournament going forward, and considering how sports fans are, yeah, that did not happen. Because during the game, this teacher, who was never identified, was yelling statements like, hit the ball. It's all very hard enough trying to take a test when you're in fifth grade. Now, add the added element of your country playing on a TV in the room while you're doing it, and add the added element of your teacher just yelling random things during the exam, and you can imagine how absolutely ridiculous this whole situation truly is. Again, there were about 10,000 different ways that this teacher could have gone about this, and he chose, quite possibly, the worst possible option. And this story actually drew such attention when students complained, and rightfully and understandably so, that they were not able to concentrate during the exam because the game was on, and because their teacher was just yelling throughout the test. Not only were the school and the teacher forced to dump the results of the exam, presumably because it wouldn't be fair to count this exam, since it was conducted under just about the worst test-taking conditions possible, but the 47-year-old teacher had to issue a public apology for his foolishness and stupidity, saying on the incident, some students were looking forward to watching the game, and I was also anxious about it. I was so thoughtless. Oh yeah, you were thoughtless, all right. That's the understatement of the century right there. If you put even an ounce of thought into this, especially since, once again, these were fifth graders that we are talking about here, and test grades mean absolutely nothing since it's an exam you're administering yourself, you would have come up with any other solution that didn't involve doing this. But at least the test didn't count, and the students didn't get screwed over with a poor grade. However unfair it may have been for the students who actually somehow thrived under these conditions, and did well in the test, and studied, and went to class instead of watching this game specifically because they had an exam that day. It's just a bizarre situation all the way around. I think that goes without saying. So if you're a teacher in Japan, and you're thinking about administering an exam to your students today for whatever reason, don't do it! Seriously, do not do it! And if you are going to do it, don't be dumb enough to show the game while you're doing it! And if you are going to be dumb enough to show the game while you're doing it, don't be dumb enough to yell during the game as though you're a crazy fan at a sports bar. I can't help you there. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this test-taking decision backfires. Talk about a dumb teaching decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9pm Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.